Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Doug McCarthy, and I'll be your MC for our webinar today, Best Practices for Using BI Publisher with J.D. Edwards. And I'm Rain Dalton, uh, consultant for Team Kane. I'm happy to share some knowledge with BI Publisher here uh, from Calgary in Canada. Nice. We're on, we're on opposite ends of uh, the North America, I guess. You're in Calgary, and I am actually down in Orlando today. Oh. Right, if you want to head to the next slide there, Ren. Yeah, absolutely. So for the presenters, uh, again, myself, uh, Doug McCarthy. I'm a VP of Sales and Operations. I've been with Team Kane for uh, just over three years now. Uh, J.D. Edwards for 17 plus. Uh, started out on the CNC technical side. Uh, and Rain, uh, you've been with us for just over, or maybe a little bit over two years. Yeah. Uh, main BI publisher uh, developer uh, within the Team Kane group. Okay. So for an agenda today, we're just going to talk a little bit about the basics of BI publisher. Uh, just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, some important information about uh, what uh, pieces you get in different releases. Uh, then we'll talk about our fast track process. Uh, uh, just a couple of quick steps there. Uh, more detail around the BI publisher packs that Team Kane offers. And then we'll get right into a demo where Rain will, will log right into uh, JD Edwards, uh, show you the uh, high level ins and outs of working in BI publisher with JD Edwards. Okay, so thanks, Doug. The, uh, some basics for BI Publisher is that there are two versions. There is an embedded version, which comes with your JDE, which links into the batch jobs and produces some designed output instead of the vanilla basic JDE reports that you get now, or what they would typically get. There is also the BI Publisher Enterprise version, which you can allow, which you can use then for developing report designs for use with OneView reports or other JDE features available. The embedded uh, BI Publisher version is the one that we will be concentrating on today mostly, and it makes use of a report definition and a BI Publisher template that links together with your UBE and generate a nice fancy design that you can use for your reports. Uh, it does this by working with the JDE XML output when you run your batch job and it renders a design over that data. Editing for the BI Publisher and development for it is done in Microsoft Word by using a development plugin and that is easily downloaded from the Oracle website. I'll be showing you some of that today in the, in the demonstration. Some key BI Publisher release information is that with Enterprise One Tools Release 913, there was the release of the data-driven output features, which allowed you to send the output to specific printers or email recipients that's driven by data of the report. And release 914 allowed a feature for you to rename the output file and location, allowing you to store that on the network somewhere, and for some load balancing enhancements, some different queues for increased performance on the server side when you're running multiple jobs at once. In the world A92, uh, electronic document delivery was introduced, which allowed you to to send emails and electronic deliveries for your for your outputs. In 913, the feature for direct print was introduced and electronic document delivery enhancements for bursting, batch distribution, and transformation. And as always, it's important to note here that BI Publisher is part of the Oracle stack, so you have the confidence of integration uh, and, and features that come with that Oracle middleware and, and software. All right, thanks, Ryan. Uh, so in general, uh, we're just going to talk about uh, our BI Publisher forms in the fast track process. Uh, at a high level, uh, it, it's very simple. It's two steps. At the start, and the finish. Uh, the goal of, of this fast track process, or in general our BI publisher forms, is to reduce the costs, uh, accelerate your, your completion or the project completion, and lower your total cost of ownership. Uh, we'll get into the details of that uh, as we go. Oh, so on the fast start, um, so the fast start, what, what we want to be doing here is taking away the development time. Uh, if you 
uh, you, you're looking at purchase orders, invoices, uh, AP checks, payroll, any of the, the forms that you may be using a third-party software for or just using the standard out-of-the-box reports for JDE, which we know are generally not too fancy. Uh, the BI Publisher templates that we have or the forms take away the development time. Uh, you don't have to have someone internally or pay a consultant uh, to develop that on however you might want it to look. Uh, so we take we take that part away. Um, and then, Rain, if we jump to the, to the next slide. Uh, so that the faster finish is you, you've got the template. Uh, the heavy lifting, like I said, is already done. Uh, and the way that the, the templates are designed, they're, they're easy to configure. Uh, you tweak them to how you want them to look. Uh, sometimes uh, we know maybe the AP group uh, has an invoice or has a, a document and they like the way that it looks and they don't want to introduce any change. So you can take that template that we've already configured uh, and make it uh, look maybe pretty darn close or almost exactly how it might look today with some, some general uh, quick consulting time. Uh, we do also have some processing option functionality that Rain will go into, I think, in a little bit more detail down the road, yeah. which gives you a lot more flexibility. And one of the most important parts that we, we like to talk about with the faster finish is uh, the knowledge transfer that we incorporate into our projects. Uh, our goal with the, the BI, Publer, BI Publisher uh, packs is not to get you onto a, a BI Publisher and, and then have you needing consulting uh, downstream. Uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, you're going to be able, or our goal will be to have you maintain those forms moving forward. Do you want to add another uh, field, uh, an additional date, change the way something looks? You, you'll be able to do that at the end of our uh, implementation, or at least that's our goal. And again, Rain will show you that in our demo later on, uh, hopefully proving that, that point. But we want you to invest in your internal staff uh, and be able to, to move on uh, on your own. Okay, Rain? So uh, kind of just talking a little bit more in detail on, on how it accelerates uh, the start and completion of your project. Uh, one scenario, we're working with a, a public entity uh, in the Portland, uh, uh, Oregon area. Uh, they, they actually were working on their AP checks for uh, at least eight weeks, I think perhaps even longer. Uh, and they were they're running into some typical problems, at least typical that, that we see in the people that are trying to uh, handle this on their own. Uh, and if you're not, if you haven't been a BI publisher developer, you, you, there's certain pieces that uh, are kind of, I would say, more difficult. And for myself, I'm not the, the developer. I'm sure Rain thinks it's all easy. Uh, <laughs> but you're struggling with that. You're eating up uh, development cycles. Um, so at the end of that, process, they came to us and said, hey, we heard you have these uh, templates. They ended up getting them from us. Um, and so if you move to the next line, or next, next slide there, uh, the entire process, once they started with our template, we were done in production within two weeks. Um, so uh, if they would have done that from the, from the start, you know, it was two weeks instead of eight weeks. Um, if we want to look at the ROI around that, Brain, we can jump to the next slide. So if you if you want to just take some general numbers, uh, throwing out seventy five dollars for an all in kind of a cost per hour for a developer, three hundred and twenty hours, uh, eight weeks, twenty four thousand. Okay, Rain. So if we take okay, um, just throwing out some ballpark list pricing for an AP check uh, BI publisher uh, template for five thousand with eight hours of consulting just to maybe tweak or configure or that knowledge transfer so you know uh, how to maintain that moving forward. Uh, $1,200 for that, I think using a $150 is just a, a standard industry uh, cost for a consultant. Uh, $6,200. So that's a big jump or a big difference from the $2,400 of what it would take from for eight weeks. And eight weeks, I would say, is a conservative estimate on doing some of these more difficult forms like payroll checks, EFTs, uh, AP checks, et cetera. So not only is there that direct uh, dollar savings, uh, but you're freeing up your development team to be working on other projects. Maybe it's maybe they're not um, you know, expert BI publisher folks, so instead of having to get up to speed on the, the heavy lifting side of that, um, you, you can eliminate all of that time 
uh, and again, money, and be moving on with uh, more time-sensitive projects. Rain, anything to add on that? No, no, that's all-encompassing. Yep. Okay. Move on to the next slide then. There. So I will turn it over to you. Uh, We'll jump right into the software. And again, uh, please, everyone, uh, do uh, enter questions as you get them. Uh, if there's something that you would like us to spend uh, more time on or would like uh, more explanation, please just uh, put it in there in the question panel, and, and we'll try to get right to that. Yes, absolutely. So with that, I will go into some demonstration here. <clears throat> so. Before I go into some of the fancy design aspects of it, just a quick uh, background on the requirements for setting all of this up for use with BI Publisher. It would be a CNC task. A quick task would be to create a project that would have three very important objects in it. One object would be the template object, which is the one where you would hook up and link the design that we would provide you with. Another one would be to have the UBE version that you want this to be linked into, and a report definition object, which links the template object and your UBE version together. The intent, the intent of these three objects is that they work together to define how you want your report to be delivered and what you want it to look like with the BI Publisher template. So these three objects will take over your vanilla output and apply the design that you can that we can provide you with. That's just a quick overview there of a quick CNC tasks. So assuming that those would be done already, I'll give you a preview of what a standard invoice output may look like with one of our standard templates. So you can see here that this is not the vanilla UBE output, but with those objects attached and our template attached, when the batch job was run, this is the output with standard headers information, the build to and ship to information there, and the detail lines with the total at the bottom. And just scrolling down a little bit, since this job does have multiple invoices, you can see that there's multiple invoices here, all run from the same job. So now that you've seen the output, we'll go take a look at some of the quick development um, tasks and what that could look like. The RTF file, or the BI Publisher template, would be an RTF file for a rich text format, and that is the file that's used when you're linking up the designs. So what I'll do is I'll open up our design here, and this design is this is the the same template, the same one that we just looked at but this is the development side of it. As we mentioned before, development for BI Publisher is done within Microsoft Word, and it's done with using the BI Publisher plugin, which then adds this ribbon of development tools at the top. So when we're opening up our, our design here, the first thing that we would do is load some sample data, and sample data is retrieved from, from your system by using a blank template. So all, all the objects that we've already discussed, instead of, of using a fancy design like this, it would just be a blank one. And that will allow you to get some data that you would link into for development. So now that we've linked in some of the, develop, the, some of the sample data into here, allow us to manipulate and take a look at what's going on. As you can see, we so have range, some... To, yes. Sorry, I'm interested. To be clear, so when you're talking about the sample data, you're talking about the XML output, correct? That is correct, yes. So uh, the, the development side here uses sample data, and that sample data would be the XML. It would be the XML output from when you're running a batch job. And that sample data is just used for development for it to sample what the types of information it's being used and referenced. So Reina, I'll jump in just for another quick one. So uh, we did get a question or a request to actually show the XML uh, output. Uh, okay. So if you just want to open up an XML document. Um, Absolutely. 
and, uh, and as you're doing that, I will say um, there's a few steps uh, to go through to be able to configure JD Edwards to produce uh, the XML file instead of, say, a PDF or a, a CSV. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that we more than happy to walk with you uh, or walk you through. Uh, usually, what, rain 10, 15, 20 minutes tops on a, on a quick phone call, you can usually uh, uh, help someone to, to produce the XML on whatever form they're looking at. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, as requested, we have a sample XML file here. So, when we're opening up that, it will just open up in browser here. And this is what the data looks like. So, when you're running your best job, it produces this hierarchical set of data for your data selection and all of the fields on your UBE in this structure. We can see address lines, customer PO numbers, dates, etc. And if we're scrolling down, not to get too confusing too fast, there are some detail lines, each in its own little subsection. So all of this is then used with the BI Publisher template, and the design renders this data for you with the output. So I'll just minimize this one for now. And uh, hopefully, when I'm going into a little bit more detail, it makes sense how that links into the design here. <clears throat> uh, just doing a quick overview here, we can see that there's that all of this is done, again, in Microsoft Word. So it's using Microsoft Word tables and designs and the features that come with Microsoft Word for designing how you want the, f the look and feel for your report to be. We can see that there is some static text, just as you would do in, in Word here. And you can see that there are these fields that have the gray highlight. And these are actually called form fields. So this is where the BI Publisher power comes in. These form fields link into each uh, little piece of data in the XML. So if we double click on this, it'll open up a BI Publisher properties dialog box. This would be specific to this form field that I had just selected. Then in here we have some basic features which tell us which field it's linking into in the XML, which data to be shown, some text to display uh, within the RTF here just for development, and some formatting options for currency or date formatting options. And in the advanced tab, we have the actual piece of code that's saying grab that field from the XML. In this advanced tab too is where you would add some complex logic and conditional statements. You would code in uh, any features or advanced features that you may desire using um, XSL code. This one's pretty straightforward. So with the sample data linked up to it, what we can do here is with the BI Publisher uh, plugin, it allow us to preview what this output would look like using the data that we had just linked in. So just to give you a quick preview of what that looks like, if I hit PDF, it would pull the data from the XML and render an output here as an example of what that would look like. So let's say that you wanted to quickly add a couple of fields. I'll show you how to make some quick adjustments to make some tweaks, modifications to what you would like to, to have. Let's say under this build to and strip to section, we wanted to add just any field for argument's sake. So we will add here some static text, extra field one. We'll make this bold, italic, and right aligned just for cosmetic sake. So this would be the label for this one. And on the right side, we want to add some data from the XML. In the insert section here, we have a field button. And what this does is it lists all of the fields within the XML in what it interprets to be its hierarchy. So if you wanted to add, for example, the environment in which this was run or an extra invoice date or address number. With your cursor placed there, you would just double click on this item here 
and it will link it into there. And again, as I mentioned, this is using Microsoft Word uh, design features. So what we can do is we can say we want to insert another row below. We can center this one and just call this field two. And you, you could add another one, for example. Do you make some quick tweaks and you want to see what the preview looks like with your adjustments? You can just go back up to the preview section here and hit PDF. And you can see we now have some extra fields here in the design in the output for every one of them. Okay, so that's just a quick broad overview of uh, how easy it is to make some adjustments using Microsoft Word features for the layout and the design and using the BI Publisher part here to add some fields with the uh, sample data. So if you're happy with your design, for example, we, you could just save it. And now your RTF file with your changes is saved. Once you have your updated RTF file, and given that the CNC has, has done the previously mentioned tasks for creating the objects, what you can do is go to the Enterprise One menus and run the program P95600, fast path to that. <clears throat> so this would be your BI Publisher Object Repository. What this is is a list of all of your template objects. So just for quick ease of use here. I'll just filter down. So we have a couple of objects on our system here for the R42565 different versions here. So you've, you already have your one designed and ready to go and you want to upload that into your system and update your output. You would come into this P95600, you would select the particular object that you want that's hooked up to the UBEN version that you want to modify. We would open that up. All of these options here would have already been defined by the CNC. We are happy with those. And we are prompted if we want to upload a new file. So yes we do, we want to upload the new RTF file that we had made. I'm just going to quickly browse to it and load it in there. So now it's loaded into the JDS system and it's asking us to confirm some of the effective dates. Unless this will allow you to set a future date for when you want this template to become effective, or we'll just leave it now and just replace it entirely for effectivity immediately. And it's as simple as that. Now we have the new design uploaded into the system, and when that report is run, the new output would have the new additions. So what I'm doing here is one of multiple ways to, to retrieve the output. I'm, uh, just for ease of the demonstration, going into the print queue here for the outputs. The print queue would have XML outputs or PDFs and other various reports. Uh, you could also do this through the work submitted jobs and retrieve your outputs through there. You can see here this one has some of the extra line items. <clears throat> So, Rain, a, a couple of just quick things. One, uh, if you could uh, let everyone know what version uh, you're using from J.D. Edwards' uh, apps and tools. Um, sure. So, right now we're using the uh, JDE 9.2. Uh, that's, that's our JDE version. And... We would be using tools release nine, uh, one of the latest ones for, for the 9.2. And the BI Publisher, I can give you an exact. We're using the BI Publisher desktop version 11.1.1.9.0. So that would be the one that you could download from the Oracle website, the plugin for the development. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
we had another question about um, uh, how you can troubleshoot uh, BI Publisher issues. Um, that's okay. a, a little bit of a broad one. Uh, it, my mm -hmm. my quick thought is one thing that that's important to know. Uh, you can be, as Rain just demonstrated, looking at the template. Uh, once you have that sample XML data, he was doing all of those changes and then using the uh, preview. Uh, yes. All of that is done outside of JD Edwards, so you can yes. get it to a final you know, tested mode without ever having to go back and forth in in JD Edwards. But I don't know if you had any other thoughts on on kind of uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Result. There are there are a few features. Uh, let me see if I can quickly break this. No, okay. Uh, one item is when you're hitting the preview for the PDF, a dialog box will come up and say that there are some runtime er errors. And that is an immediate indication that some of your advanced coding would be incorrect. Uh, another way to, to do that is in the tool section here for the BI Publisher plugin, there is a validate template option. And what that would do is run, have a quick run through of, of your code here. So the change that we just made it indicates here that there is a problem with a missing and delimiter for, for this code, but we were still able to render it, so that's not a render breaking or runtime breaking issue, but it does have an actual syntax issue. So you could use the tools validate option here for some basic ones here. It'll tell you if your if statements aren't closed properly or if there's any hanging conditions like that. But immediately if you're trying to run the preview, it would come up with a big gray dialog box with a lot of advanced code uh, saying that the Java uh, rendering is having some runtime issues. Should be immediately prompted. Uh, I don't currently have an example for that because these should be working, right? <laughs> so. yeah, right. No, I think that's uh, great, Trent. Yeah, okay. uh, sorry, one other just quick question. I'm not sure we may have to get back to uh, the uh, question or get back to this one, but do you know sure. if uh, the BI Publisher version 11.9 is compatible with 9.1 on the JDE side? Uh, yes. On that one. Uh, it, it, it is. 11.1.1.9.0 okay. um, is, is one of the latest ones, but it's been out for quite some time, so it would be used in 11, uh, sorry, in uh, 9.1, yes. Great. Okay. Uh, just as a, as a side note to that, if you're using um, versions, Enterprise One versions earlier than nine, then you will be getting into some compatibility issues and you need some alternate versions of the, the BI Publisher plugin. And if that is a question that you have, by all means, you can reach out to us and we can provide some link information that, where the Oracle website has the compatibil compatibility list. No issues. Uh, any any other questions, Doug? Uh, we have uh, one other question about uh, getting the XML output. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I, I'm going to just let everyone know that um, there is a, a little bit of case-by-case uh, -case, um, situation on how we get to the XML, although we have demonstrated that in the past. So uh, we may be able to provide you uh, an older recording that walks through that. Uh, but we'll reach out to uh, to the people that are asking about that individually and, and just kind of walk through that. And we can always set up just a quick phone call or even a private demo to, to walk you through those steps. Yes, absolutely. Happy to do so. <clears throat> All right. Uh, what, we, what we've shown thus far is just a very uh, basic standard invoice uh, um, BI Publisher template. Uh, what I would like to show now as well are some advanced ones that we offer that have some complex logic and built-in processing options. So what I will do, I will open up here is a, an output for one of our advanced invoice invoices. You can see we have some additional sections for some additional information. Uh, we also have a uh, fancier layout for segregating the individual detail lines. And we have some page numbers and <clears throat> continued footers. 
This one's just a very basic one. You can see at the at the last page of this particular invoice, we have a tax summary section and a total summary section. And it ends with a terms and conditions on the last page. And in the background, you can also see a watermark. So this one was developed with those in it and this output, you can see that. But one of the one of the features that you get with these outputs is that these are built in options within the template itself that you can turn on and off. So this one has some of those all turned off. What I'll do is we can show this one with one where we have a lot of options and additional features turned on. In this one, we can see some additional features for brought forward totals and global messaging. At the bottom, we can see page totals and cumulative totals thus far leading up to this page. So this particular one overflows to a second page with some additional lines and we can see that this page total and cumulative totals also calculate. We also have some global messaging at the bottom and some terms and conditions. This particular one again has terms and conditions at the very end of the report. Uh, but we also have ones that have them on the back of every page or no terms and conditions at all. So that's one of our more uh, advanced ones. Yeah? I, I think you, you might get to this, but a couple of questions about languages. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that was exactly what I was hopping into here was just a quick look at what the design looks for it. Just a quick look, not in too much detail. Uh, previously we showed just a quick basic uh, in invoice design. This one here is more advanced that has some built-in processing options that I mentioned before. These are toggles within your template so you can customize it. And we have some advanced logic and conditional statements built into this. With that will allow you to make changes uh, such as whether you want multiple languages in this, <clears throat> toggling them on or off, uh, global messaging, watermarks, uh, even a logo to be displayed on and off, or a particular column, column within your detail lines. Now these can be built to simply be an on and off toggle, or they can actually pull whether you want them on or off from the data of your report. So you can have that run and driven from your report information. Uh, currently, our templates have um, English, French, and Spanish, but you know, additional customization consulting can implement any range of, of languages for it. So you can see it can get pretty advanced, but we've done all the heavy lifting. All the advanced features are already built in here. Easy for you to take over with our knowledge transfer to understand what's going on, the advanced code in the background, and some of the features you can tackle and make some adjustments to. And that's really all there is to it. Just as a quick summary, the CNC would need to make the, the proper additions for three of the objects to have the report definition, the template, and UBE version, they're all linked up together. You would make the development changes and, and any tweaks that you have within Microsoft Word. And then you would then <clears throat> load that into your template object. And, and the easiest way would be just to go to the P95600 uh, program and quickly upload it and you're good to go. Any questions on this before we move along from the demonstration? Um, a couple of questions came in. Uh, one, uh, I think uh, my question actually, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I think we've got this one in the past, and I don't know the questions are piling up, so I may be missing some. But um, in a, in a, I do apologize if I do skip over a, a question as they come in. We'll definitely review them and get back to you. Uh, if we don't hit it uh, during the presentation, uh, we'll we'll reach out to you uh, definitely after the fact. 
Um, but as far as uh, you were just mentioning how you can upload via the web uh, when you do the new template, uh, but you can also, uh, for people that may be thinking about the security aspect and having people uploading forms, you can do that through OMW uh, yes, in, in uploading the, the forms there. I'm not sure if you had mentioned that, but okay. Uh, uh, fantastic. Yes. Go ahead. Um, no, that's yeah, that's you correct. That. You can you can uh, do the upload of the template uh, for the CNC here within the actual OMW project where you're defining the object itself. Uh, but this one will allow you to make additional adjustments to the language and some more advanced uh, fields would be available here. So, uh, whereas if you're doing it in the Enterprise One menus, all of that would be unlocked, given your permissions, would be locked, given your permissions. Make sure that that's underlined there. And it would allow you to just do a quick upload. So Enterprise One menus would allow you to, to do that upload and it's simpler and quicker that way but the, the object here will allow you to a lot more flexibility in, in definition of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Rand. Uh, a few questions actually have come in around the uh, processing options uh, from both okay. a technical and a, a user uh, standpoint. Uh, kind of just how they're how they're set, how they're used, uh, okay. uh, the, the what technology you're using behind it, uh, XSI. So maybe if you just kind of, I know you just touched on that briefly, but maybe go over that again. For yeah, a no, absolutely. Uh, we need to be a little bit conscious of the time. But. Yes, so I will quickly do this. So when you're running your, your job, uh, the JDE side of it, your UBE has processing options. And that's more for the data selection and what data is generated. The templates itself uh, have these fields in it that we refer to as processing options at the top. And what these are are just little form fields with pieces of code within it that can take uh, information from the from the data that you're generated to to run the output or you can go in and manually change whether you want the main language to be uh, US or CAN and that so it has built-in code within the template here that can drive how you want some of the features to to be handled in your output so it is, it is different than processing options on the JDE side for data selection. These are more so processing options for the, for the design and for the output on how it handles the data or displaying features, hiding features, which languages to use, etc. And, and again, that's used within code within the template here. If, if uh, you require more detail, or we can definitely uh, follow up with that. Uh, yeah, I think that um, definitely should cover most of the, the questions. Uh, I know that there's a few more questions that are a little bit more uh, detail about how we're, we're dealing with the detail lines. I think uh, when we get into that level, we'll, we'll reach out to you uh, directly. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a question about the P95-600, uh, and does it have to be added to each environment? Uh, and does the project have to be moved from uh, environment to environment? example testing to production um, yes you can I'll let you go ahead talk to that one well uh, definitely the environments yes uh, if you wanted to start up in, in DV you would then add the project there and if you run enterprise menus p95 600 in DV you can quickly link it up there you would then move that project to PY and, and PD um, as for deployment wise within each environment with these objects set up, when you're just uploading the template, they're good to go. You definitely want the okay. project to be pushed forward into PY and PD, right? Just as you would a typical project in OMW. Okay, fantastic. Um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what other uh, packs we have. I mean, uh, Rain's looking at the invoice there. Uh, mm -hmm. And as far as how Word uh, is integrated, all of that work that Rain was doing to add the different fields, uh, look at uh, the, and you talked about the ribbon that uh, comes as a plug-in from the Oracle site, all of yeah. that development work is done in Word. And, and how that yes. integration works is uh, you're downloading the plug-in from the Oracle support site uh, and then working. Uh, there is the caveat, uh, I don't know if everybody just noticed, but Rain is using uh, 2010. Uh, yes. As that, I think, 
is that the latest version that's that's yes uh, so certified? so there's been the uh, the attempt to move forward with the releasing the BI Publisher versions, uh, the the best one right now for compatibility is using Microsoft Word 2010 for for um, release nine and up. If you're using releases below nine, Word 2007. Uh, but thus far, we've ran into issues, and we've had confirmation from Oracle that they do not yet fully support 2013 or you know the 365 versions for Microsoft tool set here or you know office right so um, 365 we we have we did attempt to uh, to use 365 um, mm -hmm. right a couple of years back as we were or maybe a year or so I'm not sure if you've tried anything since we we do use 360 office 365 uh, on a whole but mm -hmm. uh, from a development standpoint um, we have not been able to get that used it's not certified at least not since the last time I checked uh, yes, which is I why agree. I think Rain's using. There. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so why don't we? Uh, it's about uh, you know, 13 minutes till. So uh, uh, I know there are a few more questions out there. Uh, we will wrap back around to some questions, but just to, to kind of get back into the presentation, I think we may hit uh, some of those uh, questions as we move through. Uh, yeah. There's the last one that just came through. Does the RTF template need to be uploaded via P95600 in each of the promoted environments like PY and PD uh, if done the way it yes. was presented today? Uh, the answer to that would be yes. Uh, unless you're doing it in DV and then promoting it onward, uh, they would be segregated. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to give you the one more before we we move yeah. before we put it to, to that one. Can the RD define different printers to send mm -hmm. out the PDF? Uh, say we put a variable printer, a variable for the printer name in the PDF, or I'm assuming in the XML. Will the yep. output be printed uh, out from the specific printer? Yeah, so the uh, the report definition uh, really does define the delivery of it. One of the features that was introduced in the, the 912s and so on, uh, sorry, the tools releases we mentioned earlier, are data-driven delivery and data-driven printer delivery. So you can define via the data being passed which printers to print it to. There is some additional setup, but it's definitely possible and we've had a few clients that have, have implemented that solution. All right, so the, I think we, we see that most often with, uh, with the checks you know, so if you have a microprinter, but you also want to print a copy of it to a non-microprinter, um, but that is something that we, we do quite often in, in yes. helping people get that set up. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's jump back to the uh, to the presentation. Uh, and again, I apologize if we didn't get to all of the questions. Uh, we will cycle back. Uh, and if we don't get to them uh, here during the webinar, we will definitely reach out to you uh, after the fact. Yes. So uh, just uh, in summation for the demonstration here, putting it all together is the templates that we have are already pre-configured. They're easy to, ma to maintain using the BIA, the BIA Publisher plugin with Microsoft Word and we're providing you once they're production ready. If you're happy with what we have, you can throw it in production right away. Uh, the built-in processing options that we mentioned allow feature control within the output for controlling whether the logo is displayed, global messages, watermarks, languages, and then totals that are brought forward or accumulate or flow. Um, the designs that we have are built for the standard reports, so not the car custom R55s or 56s, depending on what you have, because we use the most the most commonly used data fields are already being referenced within our designs. So if you just want to do a, an invoice R42565, we have that design ready to go and it can take in and be production ready immediately. So with all of that said and done, it is a matter of Loading up the template, and you're good to go. So just one, one note on that. I know talking about the, the R42565, if you have a, a 55 version of that, that maybe uh, adds uh, I don't know, some small customization or a large customization, what we can do is if you send us the XML from that customized version, we can put that into our standard uh, template 
and just see how it looks. Uh, you know, sometimes, depending on what your customization is, it still works out of the box. Um, mm -hmm. But where there is some tweaks or configuration needed, we can definitely work with you on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so again, just kind of a summary, uh, and I think we kept this slide in just because we really like the uh, the logo with the turtle and the rocket. Uh, but we, we're we're looking for this to to accelerate uh, your project completion. Uh, the forms uh, we've designed them with the best practices. Uh, again, the heavy lifting that's the term that I think we we like to use most often. That's all done, uh, and then with our, our knowledge transfer that we incorporate in uh, on how to maintain that form moving forward, uh, you, you get your form to production, you, you have that completion uh, quicker than if you're trying that on your own, uh, and then you're, you're reducing your cost moving forward. A um, couple of just quick questions as I see them flying by. Uh, Multi-currency absolutely is handled. Uh, one of the things uh, that I think Rain touched on a little bit is, uh, let's say you have to produce uh, uh, invoices in French, Spanish, English. Uh, if you pass uh, something in the XML that designates uh, what language it needs to be in, uh, all within one run, uh, invoice one could be in English, invoice two would be in Spanish, invoice three would be in French. Uh, so okay. uh, we can uh, follow up with you if there's uh, more detailed questions about that. Uh, and yes, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, it usually takes us a couple of days to uh, to get that uh, rendered and up on the site. Uh, so R55 versions, um, I think where Rain and I were talking on that, uh, again, just answering another quick question. Uh, sure. Our templates are designed for the standard UBEs. Uh, but if your R55 version is uh, uh, a slight modification, our point was that it may still work without any type of configuration. But in the in the question of do we support R55, uh, yes, we can build uh, a template uh, for any version, for any custom report, uh, be it an R55-42565 or an R55 you know, XYZ. Uh, we can help you design a form for any JDE UBE. Okay, yeah. uh, so back to the presentation. Uh, Moving forward. Go ahead and, yeah. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that we touched upon uh, in looking at uh, trying to, to justify the investment in, in the move to BI Publisher, uh, we know there's a lot of companies that are, are using other products uh, that are uh, powerful, uh, have been in use for a long time. Uh, sometimes uh, what we hear is that the uh, the annual maintenance and you know, paying that 20 to 22 percent every year, uh, the dependence on external consultants that may be one uh, very expensive, uh, two uh, hard to schedule. Uh, there may be a long wait time. Uh, there's also, uh, and I think maybe touching on the next slide, but there's uh, you're being forced by a third party to to upgrade to their latest version. Uh, uh, because you're upgrading JD Edwards and maybe the timing is in sync. Uh, so what we're saying is, well, if you weigh that to the cost and remembering back to that eight versus two weeks uh, scenario that we talked about, uh, with our BI yeah, Publisher Fast Track process, uh, it's a small investment. Uh, you, you take the time and the investment in your internal staff with the knowledge transfer to get them up to speed, teaching them a new skill. Uh, and giving them the ability to, to handle the consulting or the, the tweaks configuration downstream as your business may change. Uh, and, and you can eliminate those maintenance costs. Uh, as our, our packs, uh, there's a, a one-time fee, and then they're, they're yours. You own that. You don't have to pay any type of maintenance costs moving forward. Okay. Okay, Rain? So uh, I touched on this a little bit uh, from a, a third-party risk exposure, uh, you know, meaning if, if that other third party decides to, to discontinue a product or uh, uh, force you to upgrade to a latest version, uh, if you're within the Oracle stack, that usually uh, goes a little bit uh, smoother. Um, uh, the other side of thing within Oracle, uh, BI Publisher can work uh, if you, let's say, are, are coexistence, you have uh, multi-foundation or uh, maybe your dev, your, your production, uh, different companies within the entire organization, maybe on different versions. Uh, all of that can be handled with 
WinPI Publisher. Uh, the browser compatibility is one of the big things that we see out there. Uh, that people have concerns on uh, if it's working. Uh, the nice thing here is if it works with JD Edwards, it's going to work with uh, the BI Publisher piece. Uh, so it's it's in sync with your with your ERP software package. Okay. Uh, so I know there's a couple of questions on uh, what other forms uh, we do have. Uh, so this here's a quick list um, in. Really, this kind of goes back to the questions about the R55 as well. Uh, if you need a custom form, um, what we do is is we'll take a look at what your what your final output is. Uh, if you we'll work with you to get the XML, uh, and we can see if we can put that into one of our out of the box uh, templates. Uh, and the reason that we would do that is if we can do that, then that eliminates all that initial development. But if you do have something that is uh, very, uh, let's say, out of the box, uh, we can start from scratch and uh, help you build that with the best practices and uh, all the knowledge that we have gained in building out all of these other templates. Okay. Uh, we do have two levels uh, of our packages. Um, gold, uh, and I know Rain touched upon this a little bit, uh, gold and platinum. Um, we look at that as kind of the, the basic, uh, hey, you're spinning off a new company and you just need to get a purchase order uh, out the door tomorrow and you don't want to use the, the out-of-the-box uh, JDE one. Well, uh, they're, they're basic. They've got a logo, a couple of uh, pre-configured totals and page numbers, and you're off and running. Uh, with the platinum packages, uh, that's where we start to incorporate things like the uh, multi-currency, uh, watermarks, uh, terms and conditions, um, kind of the, the fancier side of things, I'll say in my non-technical way. Um, uh, for some of the things like uh, uh, payroll and whatnot, we do actually include some development hours. We know that when you are going with a with a, a paycheck, say, then you need to go back to the bank to get that uh, uh, certified, that there's usually a little tweaking of move that uh, a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Uh, we will help you do that as part of the, uh, the package. Uh, and then as far as licensing goes, uh, we, we are absolutely uh, uh, open to discounts for multiple packages, uh, multiple BIPs, multiple licenses, that type of uh, situation. Uh, Stuart uh, uh, Manley is on the, the call as well. I'm sure we'll be more than happy to talk to you about any uh, opportunities in, in that uh, side of things. I know we have a, a couple of uh, just a couple of minutes left in our time, and, and we're always very appreciative of, of everyone taking an hour out of their day. So we do try to stay within that time frame. Uh, but uh, we are doing a, a February uh, Kiss special again. Alana, our marketing guru, uh, uh, comes up with our, our great uh, ideas. I believe there was there was another option of uh, keeping it super simple. But at any rate, uh, right now, if uh, if we can get something uh, in February, if you buy one template. Uh, then we'll give you the uh, another one for free. Uh, all the small print that is so small you actually can't see it because it's not on there. But of course, that would be you pay for the more expensive one and you get the less expensive one for free. Uh, but we're, we can work through those details with you. Okay. Uh, Team Kane, uh, we're not just BI Publisher. Uh, we are JD Edwards Consulting uh, across the board, upgrades, migrations. Uh, training rollouts. Uh, we've been uh, with JD Edwards uh, since 1995. Uh, we do partner with a, a few other companies uh, where we think that their tool or their application is best of breed, uh, like Purge it from Click IT, uh, Forza for their ScanMan, PacMan, Self Service Password Reset, uh, a few other ones listed there. Uh, we'll just jump through. Uh, we can move on to the next slide as I know we're we're getting close on time here. Uh, additional questions. I'll take a quick gander, uh, but if you want to just jump to that next slide, Rain. Uh, so here's contact information uh, for both myself there, uh, Stuart uh, Manley, as I mentioned as well. Uh, and if you do have questions about XML, uh, the, the process, the development, uh, we're more than happy to get you uh, connected with Rain as well. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to help in any way we can there. Um, so uh, I know 3 o'clock, uh, at least from an Eastern time zone, top of the hour. So uh, 
again, thank you all for attending. Uh, we will, again, be posting the recording of the webinar uh, in the next uh, couple of days, I would say. Uh, and uh, if you would like to, to send a, or for us to send you that brochure, uh, please let us know. I see a few people have requested that already. Uh, we will absolutely get that out to you. Uh, and Rain, thank you as always. Uh, yeah, thank you. Great job. And uh, uh, as you know, I am now officially starting my my vacation. So I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but we'll keep the line open here for a, a few minutes for anyone that does have some uh, some additional questions. And uh, I will take a quick peek through the uh, uh, many questions that have come through and see if that uh, there are any that we that, uh, I missed and. Uh, otherwise, thank you again. Uh, have a fantastic uh, rest of the day. All right. For those of that, uh, I, I think I've gone through, and uh, I think we ha we we captured most of the questions. There's a few that we'll uh, reach out directly to you on uh, for some of the more technical pieces. Uh, if there was another question that you were hoping that we would get to, please just resubmit it. Uh, but we'll keep the line open for another minute. Unless rain, I don't know if you saw. Uh, no, nothing really. The rest of the folks again. Uh, thank you all, and if you did have additional questions, feel free to just send that off to us directly. <laughs>